Breaking news, Russian turned out to be Russian. Russian paratrooper fled to France and charmed the local liberal hipsters by publishing Russian war memoirs called Zov, while hiding for six months that his fellow soldiers were executing Ukrainian prisoners of war. Wow! Such an exclusive confession Pavel gave by himself to Swedish journalists. Now I will give you something exclusive. I know for sure that some of the prisoners that we took were later shot or hanged, but I did not see this with my own eyes. Military comrades told me about this at the end of the July as well as in August and September of last year. The book was already written by this time. So yeah, before emerging as a star in Europe, Russian paratrooper Filatiev knew that some of Ukrainians who were captured by him and his regiment were shot and hanged. But he was hiding this information from the media and the police. He did it to obtain the right of asylum in France, attract media attention to himself and earn money from sales of his military diary. He's saying that he's not sure that he would include this information in a book, even if he would know about it earlier. My goal never was to tell about all of the shit that happened. I declared to Russian citizens and wanted to tell them about the war that I lived through. Is it cynical? Yeah, unexpected, not in the case of a Russian soldier. But before we go next, we want this video to be seen by as many people as possible. So please like the video and subscribe to the channel and leave a comment below so YouTube would boost us and show us to more people. Thanks. So immediately after confession, paratrooper Filatiev began actively denying his words and saying that he was misunderstood and in general, these executions were taken out of context. I've heard in August that the prisoner I spoke spoke to and wrote about in the book was supposedly later shot, but I heard this from someone who told me from another person and I don't even know the last name or any facts, I just heard it as a rumor. These excuses look extremely pathetic, even if we believe that this information about prisoners are just rumors, it still can be useful for I don't know, investigation, I guess. But Filati remained silent about it for almost six months while living in Europe, because he perfectly understood what kind of reaction this testimony would cause. So how did it happen that another Russian who was accepted by Westerners turned out to be a shady nit involved in war crimes? This story began in the summer of 2022. I found myself here and after two days the French government made the decision to grant me political asylum, so I'm very happy. Pavel Filatiev is a junior sergeant of the 56th Airborne Assault Regiment of the Russian Armed Forces. Together with his unit, he took part in the full-scale invasion of Ukraine from the first hours. Filatiev and the 56th Regiment captured Kherson and then attempted to do the same with Mykolaiv in southern Ukraine. For 34 years I was a true patriot of my country, and I still am. I have always loved our history very much throughout my life. Vlatiev is a professional and hereditary military who served as an airborne since the late 2000s, performing tasks in Chechnya. After a pause in service, he came to the occupied Crimea in 2021 and signed a contract with 56 Airborne Regiment. As you can see, he truly loves the history of Russia, especially the history of its military occupations. I have always loved our history very much throughout my life. With the Crimean regiment, Vlatiev began his path as an invader, which turned out to be quite short. He spent about two months in southern Ukraine and in April he received a minor injury and returned to Russia. After returning home, Vlatiev wrote memoirs about the war in Ukraine called Zov and published them on his social media in August of last year. This gave a boost to his popularity. Let them read and let everyone try to understand what is happening now. I think in such a way I can open the eyes of my fellow citizens a little bit. Many people perceive these notes about the war as an exposure of the Russian army, as if without a book written by a Russian soldier with details about how Putin didn't give them enough food, no one in the world would understand what the Russians were doing in Ukraine. Ooh, yeah, we scrolled through those 140 pages of the PDF file to understand what sensational things Filatiev wrote. Well, it's a hate speech by a Russian military patriot who's upset with the state because not everything in the army is as good as he wanted to. He wanted to efficiently and massively kill Ukrainians, but the Russian army did not allow the Russian soul of the paratrooper to show its best. Filatiev proves it not only in his book, but also in his interviews. 
I have lived in Russia all my life and I understand that I love it and I want to be useful to it, but I understand that they don't give a fuck about me. Please forgive me. Well, to be honest, sometimes in his book the paratrooper actually says that this war makes no sense and that Russia is wrong, but the reasons for this whining lie not in the pangs of conscience. At least half of Filatiev's memoirs can be summed up with a quote about the culinary realities of war. The nutrition in the canteen is organized extremely poorly. Raw potatoes in a soup is a common thing. There are not enough cutlets, salads, butter and bread. They even gave us salty tea. As a result, contract soldiers practically never eat in the canteen, and conscripts simply have no choice. Oh, it's such a shame that the occupiers are poorly fed. Hey Europeans, uh, don't you feel sorry for the poor Russian boys? It's urgent to deliver quality European food to Russian soldiers so that they suffer less because Russian government clearly doesn't share the grain they've stolen from Ukrainians. Moreover, Pilatyev was so hungry that he began hallucinating thinking that NATO had invaded Russia. I couldn't fully understand what was going on. Are we fighting advancing Ukrainians? Maybe NATO? Or are we attacking? Did Ukraine attack us? Is NATO helping them? In his book, Filatyev tried to remove responsibility from ordinary Russian soldiers, in other words, from himself, in every possible way. He claimed that Russian soldiers were just victims of circumstances, they were deceived, they didn't know anything, and they were against the war. The only crime of Russian soldiers that Filatyev talks about is looting, but he justifies even this. He explains that it was done because of desperation, and besides, look at the armed forces of Ukraine! Can anyone imagine that the armed forces of Ukraine refused to loot things that they considered their spoils of war. The most terrible thing is that children are dying under the fire of artillery, aviation and missiles. Our Slavic children, there are so few of us Slavs in the world. But do you really believe that the evil Russian soldier deliberately aims at them with weapons? He was given coordinates, but he had no idea where he was shooting, and he was told that there was an enemy there. Of course, this is not an excuse, but we should not consider all of them as murderers. Yes, in his book Vladiv tries to whitewash not just ordinary Russians, but Russian soldiers as well. At the same time, he admits that he would shoot Ukrainians without hesitation, and recalls how he desired to go into battle. As you can see, there is a very anti-war desire to kill people on foreign soil. I was bound by a sense of duty and patriotism, even though some might find it stupid and many laughs at it, at the moment I couldn't abandon my weapon and run away. The light of sense of duty disappeared exactly at the moment when the Ukrainian army launched the counteroffensive. He directly wrote about this in his memoirs. If he were captured, he would probably have already been telling everyone that he came to Ukraine to attend a march on the occasion of Stepan Bandera's birthday. The fact that the book is as spicy as maple syrup is proved by the fact that Filati was not touched in Russia after the publication of the book. In a country where a children's blogger can be detained for joking about the army in TikTok, no one paid attention to a soldier who revealed memoirs about the war. At the same time, the Russian liberal circle began to admire Filatyev and turn him into a hero. Becoming a hero for Russian liberals is quite easy, it's like being a human and winning a math olympics among cats. A large number of people in Russia already love, admire and respect you. We need you. Please continue to fight for freedom and we will be by your side and try to support you. This is Vladimir Osechkin, the head of the Russian organization Gulagu Net, which helps victims of Russian internal repressions. Paratrooper Filatyev collaborated with Osechkin and quickly became a victim of repression. As a result, activists helped soldier to flee to France. Immediately after arriving, Filatyev staged a performance where he tore his documents and said, fuck you Putin. This was the moment Pavel Filatyev cut ties with Russia, tearing up his military ID and Russian passport flushing them down a toilet in an airport bathroom in Paris. This Schroeder cosplay has charmed European media, who are still searching for good Russian. Stories and articles about Filatyev were produced by The Guardian, France 24, CBS, Spiegel and other media. This attention quickly turned Filatyev into an opposition figure, who supposedly dealt a devastating blow to the reputation of Putin's army. Although Filatyev hung so many noodles on the ears of journalists in the interviews that they could easily open a ramen cafe after the broadcast using tears instead of broth. Many Russian soldiers on the front lines had no idea they had just invaded Ukraine. They hadn't even been told what to do. 
We just started moving forward. When the shelling began, we thought it was NATO approaching us, not Ukraine. The attention of Western media helped Elijah to promote his book, which he presidently asked to be translated into English before leaving. Additionally, the Port River declared that he wants to redirect all the money from sales of the English version to Ukrainian victims of war. He said that for him, a simple apology is not enough. Put the book on sale on various platforms and transfer every penny to the peaceful people who suffered from the war in Ukraine. But Vladimir quickly forgot about his nobility when, after a PR campaign by a journalist, the book brought in about 200,000 euros. The man simply appropriated the money. What a guy! Perhaps he decided that he was also a victim of the war in Ukraine. Right? And finally, Filatev gave so many interviews to Western media that he forgot his own legend. He said to Swedish journalists that he knew about the execution of Ukrainian prisoners of war before he moved to France. Hello everyone, I have arrived in Paris at Charles de Gaulle airport. Some of the prisoners that we took were later shot or hang, but I did not see this with my own eyes. Military comrades told me about this at the end of the July as well as in August and September of last year. After Filatyev's testimony, Russian human rights project Gulagunet halted its program of evacuating people from Russia who were associated with the army and law enforcement agencies. What does this story teach us? If you're a European, nothing. After Filatyev, they got themselves into another story with Russian mercenary Wagner Group member Andrei Medvedev, whom they gave asylum in Norway. Immediately after that, he charged into a fight with the police. Also, the story with the soldier Nikita Chibrin happened. The man participated in the Russian invasion as part of the 64th Russian Separate Motorized Brigade. The brigade was accused of committing war crimes in Bucha, near Kyiv, but according to Nikita's word, he did not fire a single shot. For this reason, he wants to seek an asylum in Spain. And there was also Konstantin Yefremov, who is a part of the 42nd Motorized Rifle Division, witnessed how his counterparts were torturing Ukrainians in the occupied part of the Zaporizhia region. He only witnessed nothing more, and because of that, Invader wants to seek an asylum in the USA. Trusting the Russian soldiers is like believing metastasis of a cancerous tumor. But here's my advice. If you really, really, really want to hear from them, just wait for the negotiations of Russia's capitulation and tribunal in Hawk. Thank you very much and see you next week. Bye.